Bishop Caggiano is in Europe this week with a large group of teens and young adults and slightly older. Um, and he spent the last week with the group in Fatima on pilgrimage before they head to World Youth Day. So today, he's going to tell us about the five days they've been spending in Fatima, and then he's going to dive deeply into the message of Fatima. That's up ahead here on Let Me Be Frank. So keep your radio at 1350 AM or 103.9 FM, or keep us on your phone with the Veritas mobile app. You can get the app at the Apple App Store, the Google Play Store, or at veritascatholic.com. Let Me Be Frank is brought to you by a grant from Foundations in Faith. Foundations in Faith embraces innovative approaches to funding pastoral care programs in the Diocese of Bridgeport. Resources focus on energizing lifelong faith formation and discipleship and fostering a commitment to justice and accompaniment with our most vulnerable. From seminarians to retired priests, from baptism to last rites, from suburbs to inner cities, the reach is broad, the impact is meaningful. For more information, you can visit them on the web at foundationsinfaith.org. Okay, here we go. This is Let Me Be Frank on the Veritas Catholic Network. I'm Steve Lee, and it is my great pleasure, as always, to introduce Bishop Frank Caggiano. Steve, today's historic, my friend. It's good to see you, as always, because this is the first time we're recording from opposite sides of the Atlantic Ocean. (laughs) <laughs> true, true. I was wondering what you were going to say. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah, because I'm in Fatima here with uh, our pilgrims. Halfway, really, at this point, the day we're recording, it's halfway through the uh, the pilgrimage. And it's uh, been tremendous experience, tremendous. Yeah, tremendous. That's awesome. And I'm in Norwalk. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, there you go. You always choose the better portion. How come? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. So you're there with a group uh, for World Youth Day, which uh-huh. is so exciting. Uh-huh. Um, tell us, uh, tell us about the group. Tell us about the trip. What yep. have you been seeing yep. so far? Because yep. the actual mm-hmm. World Youth Day stuff hasn't happened yet, right, Excellency? No, no. See, we we're blessed because we have a, a number of different groups converging to come to World Youth Day. So we have our teenage group, which is about, I think, there's twelve young people, I could be mistaken, but I think there are 12 teenagers who are being shepherded by two wonderful women who are very much involved in youth ministry, Sue Baldwin and Chris Otis. And then we have our young adults, which are basically a mixture of many different people throughout the diocese. They're about 40 strong, more or less. And then we have what I call the elders. See, I belong to the elder group. And the elders... (laughs) Although I, I don't think they appreciate the word elders, to be very honest. So so we should, like, cut that out of the podcast. <laughs> but, 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 we, but we who are more mature, there's uh, 12 of us. And, of course, I'm the spiritual guy for all three groups. So up to this point, we have traveled together. And it's interesting to see the older, the younger, the young adults all intermingling, right? And we've traveled on two buses, though. So the young people and young adults are on one bus, and the older people and seminarians who are all here. Uh, there are five priests, four newly ordained to here. So it's, 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 a great, it's a great mixture. And I must tell you, lots of surprises so far. So we arrived Wednesday. We're taping on Monday. No, actually, we arrived Thursday. So we're Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So we're five days in already. And all of that has been spent. At Fatima, but, ah. but among the surprises, first of all, we left Kennedy, not a problem. Landed early, not a problem. Got onto the buses to drive. That was really long. That was my first surprise because we did not fly to Lisbon. We flew to Madrid. Oh, wow. Okay. So it is far. farther than I thought because the whole thing lasted almost I'm guessing seven and a half hours wow the transit so you're overnight on the plane then all that travel so we were really I think everybody was exhausted part of the reason of the uh, the the amount of time it takes is again it surprised me I didn't realize this but I think there is a rule now 
for bus drivers that every two hours they need to pause to rest. And the first pause is 45 minutes. The second one could be as less as 15, but every two hours they need to stop. Wow. So that added about another hour to the whole adventure. Anyway, another surprise. I was expecting it to be warm, but to to be honest, Madrid wasn't Madrid was warm. Here at Fatima, it's downright cold at night. Oh wow. So I wear a jacket and a sweater here. Huh. So it's got to be in the high fifties at night. And in the daytime, probably gets to about, I'm guessing, 75, 76, not a cloud in the sky. So at Beautiful. night, when the sun sets here in Fatima and the sky is clear, it is just so crystal blue. It's, it's just such a deep blue over the shrine. It's just, it's just so compelling. And because we came early, um, we had Fatima essentially to ourselves. Hmm. Like, for example we walked the path of the shepherds, the three shepherds, the little ones. So we walked the path. When we first got on the path, we were the only ones essentially on the path. Wow. And we walked to the places of the apparitions of the angels. We visited Jacinta and Francisco's house. We went to Lucia's house. Then by the time we ended, there were groups coming. So by the time we were exiting, there was certainly a lot more because young, I think a lot of, of dioceses decide around the world decided to come to Fatima, obviously before you go to world youth day in Lisbon. Right. Yep. Makes sense. So, yep. And I told my first homily. Now I have not been preaching because mm -hmm. I've all the newly ordained. So they are preaching. I preach the first mass. I will preach the last mass. I will preach tonight um, because tonight we have mass in separate places so the seminarians are priests are with me so I'll be the preacher but they've been preaching which has actually been wonderful oh, cool. for me for them yeah and they're doing a great job in my homily though I asked the individuals or the pilgrims to understand that a pilgrimage is my definition is prayer in motion it's not a vacation it's not camping it's not an excursion it's a pilgrimage so everything that happens in the pilgrimage is really meant to be your body's involvement in your prayer to God and to give glory mm -hmm. to God. And I said, there are going to be times when there are going to be surprises and joys, times of perseverance and just sheer stamina. And I said, and the stamina is going to come from World Youth Day. Right? Yeah. When you're going to sit for hours, stand for hours just to go through security. But Fatima, so in a few minutes during our taping, they will have the second international mass for the youth that are here. I'm guessing here in the square, there's got to be 40 or 50,000 young people here at Fatima. It's like a mini World Youth Day experience. And once again, when we first came, the the procession at night, which you know is the, is the candlelight procession, was beautiful, but had a substantial crowd, but not last night. It was unbelievable. And because God is good to me, he's always good to all of us, but God is good to me too. He doesn't forget. <laughs> My room overlooks the square. Oh, and I'm on the second cool. floor. Actually, the third floor by American standards, second to European standards. So I can see the whole square. Right? So I looked over and, and it was a sea of candles. And today, the young people had these internet and they're singing and there's dancing and there's chanting and the energy, I'm exhausted. The energy <laughs> is just amazing, but it's all focused on Our Lady, which is yeah. different than focused in on encountering the Pope. And it, it, I must tell you, I find this to be more beautiful than World Youth Day. A, because every, as you know, I have a deep devotion to Our Lady but also because there seems to be here uh, um, energy and socialization, but Our Lady is animating it. Our Lady's at the center of it. It's just a very different experience. I didn't quite, I, I, I didn't quite realize that that was going to happen. So anyway, yeah. yep. This is, this is your fourth third. or fifth time? Third time, okay. No, third time to Fatima, third time. Okay. And... <clears throat> Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Each time it's so different for you because Correct. you're going, I mean, obviously the first time you went with your mother. And so this time, um, 
Mm-hmm. The the energy with the with the teens and the young adults must be. Yeah, yeah, it's infectious, and the and the friendliness and the joyfulness, and the young people stop to ask you. For example, I'm giving the catechesis for World Youth Day, mm-hmm. and so earlier today I wrote them because I didn't have time to write them before I left. I, I wrote them in the square in in Fatima here in the large square. Cool. And I was find, I found the only shade where there was also a chair. So there I am doing it. <laughs> and I got just about as I was wrapping up number two, uh, a young man tapped me on the shoulder. And I turned around and the young man was in a wheelchair. And he was surrounded by maybe five, four or five other individuals, young people in wheelchairs. And he's French, but he spoke English. And he said, He said, Father, where are you from? So I explained to him where I came, what he did, all the rest. And he said, um, we're disabled young people from France, and we're on our way to Lisbon. And he said, can you bless us? I said, can I? Yes, will I? Absolutely. And I introduced myself and all the, it was just such a, like a spontaneous encounter with young people who probably in the world's eyes would have had a thousand reasons to be resentful, angry, and yet there was a joyfulness and a peace there that only Christ can bring. Another surprise, the Holy Father's coming, as you know, to World Youth Day. He is arriving, I believe he is arriving on Thursday to Lisbon. Friday, I, I, I'm, unless he's coming to the stations, which I don't believe he is, it's really a rest day for him. Saturday, he's traveling here to Fatima. Yes. Because there's the encounter with the disabled. And I didn't know that until I arrived here. Right? And then he's off to the vigil, closing mass, and back to Rome. Yeah. Another thing that that surprised me, and of which I was very, first of all, I'm very proud of our seminarians and our newly ordained priests. They have done, they have been stellar during the whole experience. I have heard so many comments of, of praise from the young people, the young adults, the elders. I mean, I'm really very proud of them. Anyway. How many of them are there with you, Excellency? Seminarians. Uh, all the seminarians are here except for one. The Redemptorist Machar seminarians are with their communities, so I'm not exactly sure where they are here in Fatima. But the goal is we're all going to get together once we arrive in Lisbon. So and, all of them, how, except one, all of them are here. Yeah. And how many uh, newly ordained priests? Four oh, are awesome. here. Yeah, four are here. Yep. No, I should say, no, I take that back. Four plus Rick, Father Ricardo, who's neo cap with the community. So actually five of the six are here in Fatima. Only one is not here. Now, so I've spent most of my time in the bus that has the seminarians and the elders, but then I switched over to the young adults. And I'm glad I did. I want to spend time with them, but also we went through an exercise of graces received. What are the graces you received? And to hear them speak to how they have been touched in so many different ways, in seemingly ordinary or random ways, is just astonishing. It's really astonishing. So the, the, the important point here is to create accompaniment for them when they get home. This can't just be a single event. Now, luckily, most of the young people who are here are either members of uh, parishes where the leaders actually are leaders in. So there's a natural accompaniment. We have a very large group of Vietnamese young adults who already know each other very well and are involved with their quasi parish. And then there's a lot of youth leadership here, young adult leadership, who already know each other. So this, this, uh, the accompaniment following this World Youth Day will be easier and different than perhaps in other past youth, youth days as well. Right. Or mm-hmm. other areas of the country right. even. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Uh, when we went on procession, it was there was a moment of great grace for me personally because we gathered in the little capellina, which is the site of 
the apparitions, five of the six apparitions of Our Lady. And there is a statue of Our Lady who is there, present. In the procession, a replica is used, not that statue. Our young adults carried Our Lady in that procession. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> There were others, so there were, I think there were three or four teams. So a number of them got involved with, you know, other young people from around the world. But it was such a moment of great pride to have young people from Bridgeport carrying Our Lady through the procession. Now, when it began, it was cold, stayed cold. It was clouded over the sky. Here, the weather changes very quickly. And as the procession began and all of the singing and as you know, there are parts after each decade of the rosary before the procession actually begins. Everyone has a lit candle. They raise it up and sing Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. And to see that growing and growing in number. Anyway, so it leads. And because there were so many people, they had to extend the procession to the outer perimeter of the uh, of the piazza because it, it, it was just so many people. Last night, I'm not even sure how, how they did it because it was I think it was twice as many people. But... It's all about the sky. All about the sky. Because clouded over, we begin the procession. Okay. It, our lady's going around. And I peel off from the procession. So I could watch the procession in its totality. Having done it in, a number of times. And I notice that the clouds are thinning. And that the moon, you can see the brief outline of the moon. And of course, we've many times spoken of the moon being the symbol of Our Lady, reflecting light that it does not generate. Yes. So by the time the procession is ending and Our Lady stops for the Salva Regina and then goes back into the into the place of <coughs> repose and in the place of safety for the, for the stand, I look up and the, cl the clouds are gone and the moon is just brilliant in sky. It's just brilliant. And the message that came to my heart is it's not over. I'm still mm. here. Mm. It's not over. And it, it was just, it just gave me goose bumps, right? It's almost as if Our Lady was speaking to me. It was just, wow. I said, wow, wow, wow. So I couldn't sleep. I went back to my talk. I was so wired. I didn't, I didn't fall asleep till like one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but what a grace. Yeah. yeah. What a grace. I encountered already a, a number of American bishops. Um, Bishop Sweeney, Kevin Sweeney, fellow Brooklynite, the Bishop of Patterson. I'm crossing the street with my sister who's with me for this pilgrimage. Oh, okay. And a couple of dear friends, again, part of the elders. And we're crossing the street, and all of a sudden, this huge crowd of young people starts screaming, How are you, Bishop Frank? And I'm saying, Who are you? <laughs> 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 and then Bishop Sweeney comes comes running over it. And I said, oh, Kevin. So, we, you know, greeted each other and all the rest. And again, that's the sort of thing that happens in World Youth Day. This happening here at Fatima. And it was good to see the bishops. Good, good, good man. Lots of enthusiastic young people from his diocese as well as Metuchen. Now, I tell you all this because... We went back to the hotel. The place we wanted to eat was closed. So we meandered our way back. And as I've said before, here at Fatima, there is an ancient tradition of pilgrims on their knees, traversing either the perimeter of the sanctuary or the entire length of the, of the piazza, which is huge, huge. I mean, you can yes. see the agony on people's faces. Anyway, one young person, was standing at the top of the steps speaking to another. And he had two huge bandages on each of his knee, one on each knee, where the blood had soaked through the bandage. Because obviously that young man traversed the entire length on his knees and suffered that consequence. Wow. And I thought to myself, what an amazing thing, which is what an amazing thing to see that level of perseverance and sacrifice. And it's all for reparation of sins. Yeah. yeah. There was another young group here, young pilgrims. I think all of them did it together. 
along all the same shirts, must have been 60 or 70 young people, all going down the path. My sister and, and the, the, the group that she walks with, you know, when we do pilgrimages, who came for this one, they were on the other side of Piazza earlier today, and they saw a little mini procession, a little tiny statue of Our Lady on this little styrofoam platform <laughs> that were were being carried, and they, they just looked with it, it was so odd, but they had arranged for children to carry Our Lady. Six children. And all huh. the adults were behind the children. So the children were leading, and I thought to myself, of all places in Fatima, of course it should be the children. Yes, yes. Of course it should be. Right? And those are experiences that people will never forget. They will never forget. So, once again, Every time I come here, I'm just like richly blessed. I think everybody is. But this time in particular, as a preamble to World Youth Day, where World Youth Day is much bigger, more busy, easily more distracted, mm -hmm. lots of waiting on lines, waiting for security, waiting to exit. This was almost like a mini version, but much more focused, spiritual, and I think just spirit, it's just fruitful on so many levels, even for us older. It was just, it's yeah. just been a blessed five days. It really has. Yeah. Just a time to be, like you said, in more silence and to kind of collect mm -hmm. yourself before you go into right. the rush and the craziness of World Youth Day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, exactly. That's very well said. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's yeah, it's quite, um, yeah, it's, it's been quite a blessing. Mm -hmm. Is, is there a, has there been a set schedule there while you've been there or is it kind of just people do and well their i celebrated mass in the capolina um the same day that the young people from bridgeport helped to carry our lady so that was arranged by a pilgrimage group in advance but there is mass celebrated at set hours both in the basilica and in the capolina they've added new ones now because of the volume of young people who are here so at three o'clock, which you'll be starting in a few minutes, you will hear in the background lots of cheering, screaming, yelling, or you know how it is. Young people yeah. get all excited. <laughs> so, so, cool. that, so yeah, there is a set schedule. There are confessions. I myself went to confession. I have to confess that after the confession, um, the lovely sisters who were there, when I walked in, there was a, lots of people waiting, and I cut the line. They told me, you come, come, cut the line. I said, you have a lot of sins. No, no, come, 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 cut the line. <laughs> so I felt, when I walked out, I felt awfully embarrassed. I thinking, I was like, what a way to hear your confession. You cut in front of everybody else. It's terrible. <laughs> but she would have, no, she would not be broached. That was it. You're going, right. and that's it. <laughs> right. What? Uh, so when do you head to Lisbon, and how long is the trip? All right, so this is Monday here. So yes. Monday night, tonight, I have mass with seminarians and priests. I will take them all out for dinner. Tuesday, tomorrow, we go to Lisbon with hopeful arrival at noon because the opening mass is tomorrow with the Archbishop of Lisbon. Okay. But we will have mass along the way. So and I keep telling the young people, you have to husband your energy. Mm -hmm. You have to choose wisely what you're going to do because you do want to go to the papal events. That's ultimately the high point of why we're here. I think this is a high point as well. So some of these other events, you may choose not to go. Right. That's fine, right? If you want to rest or just relax or just be able to kind of process what's going on because the danger is just so busy that all of it just goes by and you don't really reflect on it, which is not good. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Te teens are always so receptive to that, to that message. <laughs> yeah, well, at least I've done my duty, right? They may not right, do it, yes. but I've done my duty. Right. And then um, uh, I have one more question before the break, Excellency. I have to ask you about the food. What's the food like in Portugal? Oh, the food is superb. Food is superb. And, and I have been very proud of myself. I've had no desserts, <laughs> not too much bread, lots of salads. But, the, but I love salad. You should know, I love salads. I mean, it's just the oil is to die for. The figs wow. are to die for. 
And it's all fresh, you know, it's all fresh because it's, I mean, it's, Portugal is a beautiful country, just beautiful. Yes. And in fact, it's interesting, driving through Spain, a lot of Spain is arid, right? When you uh -huh. come into Portugal, soon after you come into Portugal, it becomes totally different. And it's mountainous. Spain uh -huh. is very flat. At least that section of Spain is very flat. And olives, figs, plums, um, just a ton of them, banana, I mean, all over the place. Awesome. So the food has been magnificent. And of course, I like codfish, bacala. That's speciality here in Portugal. So I've had it every single day. Nice. Yep. Nice. Different ways with garlic and cream with cornbread, which was it's like a corn muffin with bacala. <laughs> it was like the best thing ever. <laughs> Broiled. I mean, it's just, yeah. <laughs> and, and some good wine, I hope. No. I have an old wine. I was on my antibiotics. No, because oh, I boy. had an ear infection oh. that I had to take care of. So I went to Treat and Release and a shout out for Treat and Release in Monroe because in and out in 40 minutes. 40 minutes. It was the Tuesday before we left. We left Wednesday night. And I thought to myself, if I don't take care of it, then it yeah. may turn into a real issue. So yeah. my antibiotics ended yesterday. So, you know, we will be feasting today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, gosh. Great. So on that, we'll, we'll take a break. Excellency, maybe you could teach us about um, Fatima and, yeah, uh, and the message of, of Fatima on the mm -hmm. second half. Okay. So this is Let Me Be Frank on the Veritas Catholic Network. We'll be right back. If you're concerned about your end-of-life plans, searching for a Catholic cemetery, or have loved ones who are buried in one of the 14 Catholic cemeteries throughout Fairfield County, now might be a good time to begin planning for yourself or for other family members. Call one of our family advisors at 203-742-1450 and select option 5 to leave a message or visit www.ctcemeteries.org. Many people don't realize that they can be buried with their deceased loved ones, even if all of the family's in-ground plots have been taken. The Diocese of Bridgeport Catholic Cemeteries provides in-ground burials, as well as columbarium and mausoleum options. This makes it possible to unite your family together in the same cemetery, and it's an opportunity to build a bridge for your family back to the church. Talking about this issue is not easy, but pre-need planning makes your wishes clear, reduces cost, and helps your family avoid difficult decisions at a time of grief and loss. You can start your planning now by contacting one of our family advisors at 203-742-1450 and select option 5 or visit www.ctcemeteries.org. We can guide you through the options, regulations, and considerations to help you make the best decisions for your family. The number is 203-742-1450 and select option 5 or visit www.ctcemeteries.org. Okay, welcome back to Let Me Be Frank on the Veritas Catholic Network. So, Excellency, awesome stories. I, I mean, it sounds like you're having an incredible trip um, mm -hmm. so far and it's, I'm sure it's yeah, only going to get better. No, but I doubt. Um, but Fatima, of course, we need to look at the, the message of Fatima, right? And and how in many ways it's very apropos for the modern world, particularly our contemporary world. And it all boils down to the shepherds, the three shepherds, Jacinta, Francisco, and Lucia, because the most unlikely candidates to be the ones who are the messengers of Our Lady are the ones who precisely, by the qualities of their life, teach us what the spiritual life is all about. Our tour guide on the bus said, if there is one word that, that summarizes who these children were, poor, illiterate, shepherd children, basically in the middle of nowhere, is that there was an ability to surrender, an ability to obey, a purity of prayerfulness, and a willingness to say yes to Our Lady that marks the spiritual life. And you have to think that Lucia's uh, mother did not believe her at first. Jacinta and Francisco's did. Lu Lucia's, well, in fact, she had forbidden her to go further, 
Christ, the apparitions. The political authorities of, of Portugal at the time, they had just created a secular country. Therefore, they were opposed. And we know the story that they imprisoned the children. They also uh, deceived the children in believing that one was being tortured so that the other one would give up the, the secrets, right? And of course, none of them spoke because they obeyed what a lady asked. Only little Jacinta was so excited about seeing the lady that she told her parents, right? But that's to be natural for a little girl, eight years old, whatever, right? So let's go deeper, right? So surrender. The quality of surrender is antithetical to the quality of pride. It's antithetical to the belief in the modern world that my life is all about me. When you surrender to God, you are making the, the explicit declaration that my life is not about me. It's about you, O Lord. Of course, Our Lady surrendered here, right? Our Lady surrendered to her son, to the vocation God had given her. World Youth Day is dedicated to Our Lady. It is the visitation, right? Mary went out in haste. So these children surrendered. Because Our Lady never commanded them to do anything. It's another interesting point. Our Lady asked, asked them. Hmm. And every single time they said yes. There was it a doubt, was it hesitation? The answer was yes. Now, not not to malign, you know, modern children, because it's contemporary children, because they our children are great, our greatest one of our greatest possessions. But it's not infrequent. I don't think it's unfair to say it's not infrequent that when you ask the young children now to do something, the initial answer is not yes. Right? Right. They either will say no or they'll bargain. And please, God, sometimes they say yes. Right? <laughs> For these three, it was always yes, never but yes, immediately yes. And that was it. That was it. You ask, we do. And they were obedient. Right, so you could you imagine? Now let's imagine. So you're nine years old, or ten years old, or eight years old, and you think next door your brother or your cousin is being tortured to death by these authorities, these civil authorities, and the only thing you have to do is you have to say what the lady said to you, and you don't do it. I don't know. I don't know many adults who would do that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So they were obedient. Now again, surrender acceptance, obedience. Who does that sound like? Sounds like a lady. <laughs> so she picked yes, the exactly. ones who best mirror her in the world. And then, of course, prayerfulness, because the central message of Fatima is to pray, to pray my rosary, to pray, to pray for the conversion of sinners, to pray for peace in the world, to pray for the conversion of Russia, and all that means, not just the country of Russia, including Russia, but the conversion of all the idealistic, atheistic, materialistic, communistic, all those ideologies that seek to harm the message, well, people, Christianity, and the church. So the technical title here is Our Lady of the Holy Rosary of Fatima. Do you hear the music in the background? Can you hear it? I do. That yes. must be the mass. Right on cue. <laughs> I, I, we name Our Lady and there she is. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope and pray everybody who's on this podcast one day can come here. It's just, it's just so beautiful. Anyway, so what is untimely about a message to pray in the 21st century? Because in the end, one of the messages I'm going to give at World Youth Day is that prayer is not passive, it's active. Prayer is one of the most profound ways you can love your neighbor. So in the end, there are certain things you can change, certain things you can alleviate, certain problems you can make a difference in. And there are many others you cannot. A person who's dying a person who's despairing. You can be an instrument of God's grace, but God's grace is what's going to change that. Not you, not me. 
So all this idea of self-help and psychological therapy and counseling has a purpose that is good and positive, but it's not the total answer. It can't be. Only God can heal, fully, truly, and completely heal. So in the end, we need to go back to a life of true prayer. And the rosary is the simplest and easiest way to do it because it, you meditate on the mysteries of the Lord. So what, what, what else do you need <laughs> in the end? And anyone, once you know yeah. the three prayers, anyone can pray the rosary of any age once you know them. Yes. So, so, so in my mind, that is why this place, when it speaks of conversion and repentance, it speaks of reparation of sins. It, it speaks of the prayer for peace. And it's the rosary at the heart of it. The message is so simple. But if all Catholics live that way, how would the world be different? I was thinking about that last night. I mean, granted, we're not the majority of the world's population. But we're enough of the world's population that we could move the world in a totally different direction. Think of all the leaders of the world who are Catholic. And if you want to be a Christian, how we could move this world in such a profound way. Because we know the messages, right? There were six. Five here at the, at the little shrine and one in a different place six days after she normally appeared, which was the 13th, because Our Lady waited for the children to be released from prison, from jail. Only a mother would do that. <laughs> because they were so worried, they were so anxious, that they could not get here because they were held against mm -hmm. their will, that Our Lady waited. Mm -hmm. And when they were released, she appeared to them. I mean, it's just that, it, anyway, I could go on and on and on. So, in more detail, say, so what is Fatima all about? All right, so the messages. In May, Our Lady speaks to the children about how they need to suffer for the reparation of the sins against her son and her own immaculate heart. Hefty thing to ask children to do, that they need to pray for the conversion of sinners. Then in June, she became more specific because in May she said she is a lady from heaven. She didn't reveal herself, but she immediately, as a good mother, wanted not to frighten these children. Like, who is this person? So in May, she specifies how to pray. So she speaks about the rosary in particular and how to pray the rosary every day. She speaks more about her immaculate mm -hmm. heart. And it's in June that she reveals, this is very beautiful um, manifestation, it's the only word I can think of, where light appears. And for Jacinta and Francisco, the light right, encircles them and goes upwards into the sky. And Lucia, the light encircles her, but stays below. And that's when Our Lady said to these children that both of you will be with me very soon. And Lucia, you are going to live a very long life. She lived to, I think, 98. Because you will bring my message to the world. And in the Spanish epidemic, the Spanish flu epidemic, the children, right, fell ill and died. Yes. Right? So, yes. again, then in July, she speaks of the miracle. She speaks that she will give a sign in response to the children asking that people will come to believe. She also spoke about the message of hell, the conversion of Russia. And that is when she introduced, oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy, which is the Fatima prayer. But it summarizes the Fatima message. Yes. Right? Yeah. Then in August, she speaks of her chaste spouse, St. Joseph, in his role in the prayer and in the conversion of the world, because he's the guardian of the church. 
He's the patron of the whole church. What's interesting in September, and this is so beautiful, again, so maternal, in September, she cautions Francisco not to wear the rope to bed because he wore a rope as a penitential act. Because remember, Francisco never saw Our Lady. He heard her. He never saw her. And Mary said that he would go to heaven, but he needed to pray a lot of rosaries. <laughs> but in the love of a mother, but she didn't want him to suffer needlessly. So she said, don't wear it at night. Yeah. If you wish to wear it in the day, mm. not at night. I could hear my mother saying that to me as a little boy. Don't do that. Yeah. It's too much. Right. And then on the October 13th, she revealed that she was, in fact, a lady of the rosary. And, of course, it was the miracle, right, of the sun. Mm -hmm. So I think you've heard me say many times we've complicated our faith in some ways. Complicated because lots have been written for um, very good purposes. And there may even be this desire to read as much as you can, but I'm much more of the opinion. Once you hear it from Our Lady's mouth, once you heard it from Our Lord's mouth, you heard it in the Gospels, you heard it in the Scriptures, you heard it from Our Lady here, Lord. I mean, you got everything you need. So read, learn, but don't forget the basics. Don't get lost in the theology and forget what the Lord and Our Lady said. That's the path to heaven, Yes. right? Right. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Yeah. Can you... Uh, so I didn't know that she, one of her um, messages was about... Mm -hmm. Joseph. So what did she okay, say about him? Here. Okay. She says, you must pray. Continue to pray the rosary every day in order to obtain the end of the war. Because remember, World War I is going on. In October, our Lord will come and our Lady of Sorrows and of Mount Carmel and St. Joseph with the child Jesus to bless the world. So she includes St. Joseph in the blessing that's coming. And she mm -hmm. said, God is pleased mm -hmm. with your sacrifices, but he does not want you, Francisco, to sleep with the rope on, wear it only during the day. And then when they must have asked in their minds about miraculous cures. And she said, some will cure, others I will not. She said, but in October, I will perform a miracle so that everyone may believe. And, of course, she predicted that if people did not pray, there'd be a worse war. And, of course, it happened. But the people of Portugal yeah. hold very dearly to the conviction that Portugal was not invaded in the Second World War. Precisely because of that. Hmm. Right. Wow. Interesting. It's interesting. So, Joseph came also to bless the world. Then a lot has been said about yeah. the secrets, right? Right, the vision of hell, the prediction of the great mm -hmm. war, and how it could be prevented, and then of course the uh, the persecution and death of the Pope. Mm -hmm. And John Paul fervently believed that the third miracle, the I'm sorry, the third secret unfolded in his life. Right. Yeah. When he was shot. Correct. Right. Exactly. So the fact that Francis, so John Paul came, Benedict came, Francis came more than once. It's, it's, it's a great testimony to what three little shepherd kids could do. I mean, the high and mighty, the, <laughs> oh, get real people. Really get real. <laughs> Who who's really the high lady? Who really is? And that's a great lesson yes. for all the for all the, the, the hierarchs of the church too. Right. So it's good, it's good to come to yeah. Fan and realize who our lady, you know, can still use to do what her son wants. Mm hmm Yeah. I love I love the story. I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, I I love the idea of it. Where um, they used to pray the rosary, the three shepherd children, before they saw Mary, 
And to get it over with, they just go, Our Father, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary 10 times. And then Our Father and Glory Be. And, um, but then once, once they saw her and she told them, Look, the rosary is really important. It's really powerful. And yeah, of that course. all changed. But they're children. <laughs> You're I mean, right. So yeah. they weren't perfect, but they were, they were both right. they're children. Well, how many times <laughs> do you and I pray or anybody else in that may praise the rosary? And suddenly you're on the ninth bead and you said, well, What I just, what, what happened with the last seven beads, right? Yeah. Now, since the first one. All right. Because you're off in La La Land or worrying yeah. about this or that and this other nonsense going on. Right? Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, the only thing I can say is this. I think in the end, if we want to renew the church, if we want to heal the church, if we want the church to be strong in the face of persecution, and it is here and it will grow, we got to get back to the basics. It's as simple as that. And all of us as sinners, we need to make reparation for our sins. All of us need deeper conversion. All of us have to develop our prayer life. All of us can go can can have a huge advocate in Our Lady leading us to our Lord. I mean, in the end, I think the recipe for the renewal of the church comes through Mary. I've said that a thousand times. I'll say it now a thousand and one. And if that's the case, this is one of the key pieces here at Fatima in the message that was given. Mm-hmm. And she loves us so much. That's why she's appearing. She has appeared in various places. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. well, um, so before we end this segment, Excellency, can you just talk a little bit about the miracle of the sun that happened that October? Because I'm sure some people yeah. know about it, but so maybe the miracle others of the don't. sun, there was an expectation, and the word I got now that in this very place, when it was a field, that Our Lady would uh, manifest some sign that this is real. Now, you have to remember that the traditional dress here in Portugal was wool. So all the individuals were dressed in wool. And of course, if, if the evenings now or any indication, if it were cold and rainy, that's miserable, completely miserable. Right? Yes. So yep. the day when it came, it was raining like we've been having storms back home, just deluge. So much so that there was mud in some places ankle deep. Okay. Having said all that, at some point, the sun, as it's described in many different ways, including two reporters who are here, right? from the news media of the newspapers in, Port in uh, Portugal, that the sun began to appear as if it was spinning in different colors. And that it also appeared as if it was literally falling out of the sky, that it was getting closer and closer to everyone. And it was, there were, um, I, there were tens of thousands of people here. It wasn't like six people. It was a lot. And there yeah, almost was a right. panic in the crowd because they thought that it was ending, like the, the sign was, She's going to get rid of all of you because you're useless, right? You don't want to pay attention to the heck with you all. And within just a few seconds, the, the sun took its place back. And then the accounts say there was just like dead silence. And you know how human nature is that's fallen. You immediately go to the excuses. So it could have been this, it could have been that, maybe it was this, maybe it was that. However, however, Everyone's dress was dry. Everyone completely dry. <laughs> now, I don't have a lot of stuff that's made of wool, but this much I can figure, you're not going to dry it without some sort of dryer or in 30 seconds. It's not going to happen. Right. Right. right? And shrinkage. <laughs> so that was the lasting effect that people would say, no, it's not your imagination. It's not. And why did she do that? Because Our Lady is not into magical displays. She was there so that she could turn 
the people's attention to the message that is essential for the long-term prosperity and peace of the world and the conversion of our souls to enter into heaven. The stakes here are enormous, enormous, because our world is going in the wrong direction, and the amount of possibility where you could have a catastrophe is growing. I remember when I was a young man, there was the nuclear clock. Remember the nuclear clock? No. No, the nuclear clock was held by a group of scientists and and ad, you know advocates, and it measured how much time was left to nuclear catastrophe. And I remember oh. that it was ten minutes. Recently, I just stumbled upon the fact that that same group and the people who followed after them now have it at eighty-eight seconds. Eighty-eight yeah. seconds to Armageddon, but man-made Armageddon, not divine Armageddon. So we're not going in the right direction, we're going in the wrong direction. And when you think of the very image our lady spoke of, of a huge light in the sky that would bring huge destruction, she was foreshadowing what have happened in the Second World War. Well, now you have lunatics, right? Like the leader of North Korea, who has many of them. So yes. what's going to convert that country? What's going to convert him? It's not going to be an army. It's not going to be an invasion. It's going to be prayer. Right? Yes. Yep. So once again, yeah. yeah. So that was the miracle of the sun. And unfortunately now people think it's, you know, myth. A lot of, oh, no, they were, they were they're ignorant. You know, it's a century ago. And what would they know? And, Again, more of the modern contemporary hubris and pride that we think that we're like, that we're the yes. most advanced and educated. Are you kidding me? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, and, and that's a good subject oh, for another oh, day. Oh, I could go on for <laughs> 10 podcasts if you want on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Um, we'll take our, our final break and come back with a listener yes, question absolutely. in the next one. So this is Let Me Be Frank on the Veritas Catholic Network. We'll be right back. Hey, it's Matt from Restless on the Veritas Catholic Radio Network. Each week on Restless, we young adults restlessly seek the face of Christ in today's crazy and mixed up world. Join us each Friday at noon on 1350 AM, 103.9 FM, the Veritas app, or wherever you get your shows. Hope to see you there. All right, welcome back to Let Me Be Frank with Bishop Frank Caggiano. All right, Excellency, here is this week's listener question. It says, as part of our diocesan participation in the U.S. Eucharistic revival, might we institute the teachings of Sacrosanctum Mm -hmm. Concilium? Have we sacrificed the sense and example of reverence as we receive the the bread of life? Yes, the answer is yes, and the answer is yes. That is... Our Eucharistic revival will be later than the national one because of the one. We want to set a foundation, I've said this many times now, uh, of truth, beauty, and goodness so that we, we create the, the architecture for real conversion that's long-lasting, leading to reception of the Holy Communion in a fully active, reverent, participant, right way. So yes, May of next year is the centerpiece of the start of that phase, meaning let's talk about the destination. There'll be six months of preparation for leadership and then three years afterwards. So yes, part of that whole 40 month, actually 42 months worth of, of opportunities will, will in part be sacrosanct continue. And also back, go back to the teachings of fathers, the teachings of St. Thomas, right? This is the time for us to yes. really re- rediscover who we are, right? Yes. Yep. Great. Okay, so if you have a question for Bishop Frank, you can send it in on social media or you can email questions at veritascatholic.com. Bishop Frank Caggiano is on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So is Veritas Catholic Network. And as always, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Foundations in Faith. A grant from the St. Therese Fund for Evangelization makes it possible for us to bring Let Me Be Frank to you. Foundations in Faith is committed to supporting and transforming 
Pastoral Ministries in the Diocese of Bridgeport, and you can learn more about their outstanding work at foundationsinfaith.org. Excellency, what's uh, so you're off, and next week we'll talk yes. about what happened um, yes. at the World Youth Day in Lisbon. Yep. Awesome. Great. So before you go, would you please give us your blessing? Absolutely. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Through the intercession of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary of Fatima, may the Holy Spirit of God bless all those who are listening to us this day. That his light may invade our hearts and our minds to seek conversion, reparation, and the strength and courage to proclaim the good news of the Son of Mary to a waiting and broken world. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Okay, my friend. Next week, same time, same place. Thanks, Excellency. Safe travels. Thanks. God bless. Thanks.